Hello, my name is Falkland. I'm Senior Director of Scientific Affairs and Marketing at BioNano Genus. And I'm excited to talk to you today about our genome imaging technology and how it allows you to detect structural variants genome-wide in an unbiased way, all the way down to 1% allele fraction. And when we're talking about structural variation, we're talking about these large rearrangements of the genome where there's typically no major uh, gain or loss of material. It could be an balanced event like a inversion or a translocation or an unbalanced event like a deletion, insertion, or repeat expansion. And when you attend conferences like this, um, you may know about spatial sequencing and long read sequencing, but the truth is that in the clinic, say, when a leukemia sample is analyzed, structural variation is detected um, with this method, cytogenetics, uh, specifically a karyotype, which is really almost a century-old technology where you just crack the cells open uh, like an egg and look at metaphase chromosomes with a microscope. That is the standard of care. And when uh, NGS was introduced, there was this idea that sequencing could replace all of these older methods. Uh, and that hasn't really turned out. And the real reason is that these uh, NGS instruments didn't come with a microscope, but they came with a blender. And this may seem like a silly analogy, but think about this. Um, how would I be able to tell you how many pieces of kiwi were in this blender and where they were after I turn it on to make a smoothie? It's impossible, right? But that's exactly what you do with NGS. You take a structurally perfect genome and blend it, shred it in tiny little fragments of a couple hundred base pairs, analyze those, piece them back together, and then you try to figure out what the structure looked like in the first place. It just doesn't work. And the other problem with NGS is that the human genome is highly repetitive with just about a third of the genome consisting of unique sequences and two thirds consisting of repeats. So now if your read length is only a couple hundred base pairs long and you get a read back of this two thirds of the genome, it's impossible to say where that read exactly mapped to. And you can say, well, I don't care about repeats, but the problem is that structural variants are often flanked by repeats and they typically are caused by the recombining in non-allelic homologous recombination of these repeats. So if you're using a sequencing technology that is blind to repeats, you're also blind to the two thirds of the genome and the structural variants uh, that are flanked by them. And that is why this is still the standard of care to look at large structural variation. And the reason why this is such a robust, robust technology is because they visualize patterns on intact DNA molecules and they look at changes in these patterns to identify rearrangements of the genome. And that's really what BioNano does as well. But instead of a karyotype, we use nanochannel arrays to massively parallel uh, linearize extremely long DNA molecules and megabases in length. And, um, and then we place more patterns on these molecules. So in a karyotype, you have a couple hundred bands. We add 500,000 of these bands to the molecules. But then also here, we look at these patterns on these long DNA molecules to call structural variants. And our microscope is called Sapphire, and it automates the imaging of these long molecules. So I know it provides an entire workflow. We have the Sapphire instrument. We have the chips that linearize the DNA. We have consumables for DNA isolation and labeling, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And then we have our own software called BioNano Access to analyze that data. So let me tell you real quick how it all works. First step in isolating megabase pair DNA is to get these molecules uh, without shearing them out of cells. And we have our own extraction kits that we call BioNano SP. They're very gentle and they work with a disk that the DNA binds to paramagnetic disk. And these um, DNA isolation protocols are fast. They're faster than a typical chiagen kit. Uh, they require just um, 650 microliters of fresh or frozen blood. We can work with bone marrow aspirates as well. Uh, we can work with culture cells, a million and a half, or we can work with as little as 10 milligram of fresh or frozen tissue. That could be a cancer uh, biopsy. Now keep in mind that uh, we cannot work with FFPE treated cancer samples because uh, the DNA is just too fragmented there. 
Now, the molecules that we collect with this method are extremely long. If you look at this distribution here, you see that the molecule M50, which is somewhat of the weighted average of the molecule length, is over 400 KB, with a tail that goes all the way to two and a half megabase pairs. In comparison, we sort of there on the left, um, what the typical read length is with long read sequencing, you see that that's orders of magnitude less than these very long molecules that we isolate. And it matters, of course, because these long molecules allow you to span these repetitive areas of the genome. Now, once we isolated that megabase size DNA, we label a specific sequence motif all throughout the genome. We do that in a single enzymatic reaction that simply attaches a fluorophore directly to the DNA in a single step. It's a very robust reaction. And we label a single six base pair sequence motif all throughout the genome. So there's no probes. There's no variety of labels. It is simply a single six base pair sequence motif, and that creates a barcode on these very long molecules that we can identify. The labeled DNA is then linearized into our nanochannels, and that is really the core technology that our company was founded on, our ability to make these very long molecules squeeze into narrow channels. And once the molecule is in that channel, it is uniformly stretched and we can get all the information that we need just by taking a picture. That's exactly what happens here. You can see that these blue lines uh, in the bottom half of the figure are all individual molecules of double-stranded DNA that each sit in one of the channels uh, shown above. We stain the background in blue with an intercalating dye, and then the green dots that you see are these uh, labels attached to that six base pair sequence motif. Now, the instrument will cycle molecules into the nanochannels, image them, pull new molecules in, image them, and do that over and over and over again. And with that, we can collect 100x coverage of nine human genomes per day. Or you can simply run these chips longer and collect as much as 400x and three samples per day. Or now we're even allowing you to collect as much as 1600x coverage that run can take anywhere between two and four days uh, for three samples. So you can collect a massive amount of data, and I'll tell you in a minute why you would want to do that. Now, once these images are collected, the instrument will um, analyze these images and identify the molecules in each of the pictures. And the digital representation of these molecules is then aligned with each other pairwise in a complete de novo assembly of the genome. That is an incredible, uh, powerful, uh, and compute intensive procedure where we pairwise align every molecule that we image with every molecule that we image. And we built these consensus genome maps that you see at the bottom there in blue that represent the average spacing of the labels on each of the molecules that we imaged. Now, these de novo assembled maps shown in blue here are then aligned to the reference genome of your choice. If you work with a human genome, that's HG19 or 38, but you can use with any uh, reference of your choice uh, for other organisms as well. And so if the reference here is in green, then you can see that the left half of that map aligns perfectly, the right half aligns as well, but in the middle there, there's a deletion, there's a number of labels that are missing, and the other labels are pushed closer together and our software will call that. And as a matter of fact, we call every single major type of structural variance uh, using this same mechanism. So you see on the top uh, left that we call deletions, when the spacing between labels is moved closer together. And insertion is similar when the spacing between labels increases, and we call those automatically starting at 500 base pairs. We can look at the repeat arrays, uh, either like shown in the image here where we have a label per repeat, but if not, we can measure the flanking labels and measure that spacing, and I'll show you an example of that. We can detect tandem duplications where a pattern is present in two copies next to each other, direct or inverted, starting at 30 KB. We can detect translocations when a de novo map in blue here aligns for half with one chromosome and half with another chromosome. And then we can detect inversions as well, which are really hard to pick up with most methods because there's no gain or loss of material. But when a pattern is simply flipped around, uh, we can detect that automatically starting at 30 KB as well. And then when you look at your genome analyzed by Nano, you see something like this. This is called a circus plot, 
The lines in the middle in magenta that you see are translocations between the different chromosomes. And then in concentric circles from the middle, we have a copy number tool that works just like array or NGS copy number by counting the molecules aligning to each part of the genome. And then we see uh, inversions, deletions, insertions as well. Now, when you click on any of these items, you're taken to a map like this, where you zoom on, zoom in on the exact breakpoint. You can see the copy number change on top and the translocation right there in the middle. And then we can even show you the molecules that we image that align to that structural variant and show evidence for it. Now, if you don't want to work with our software, you can export all of our data as a VCF file and work with it at any software package of your choice, of course. Now, I want to show you one example of a familial cancer in a family that was studied at MD Anderson, where four children had the same extremely rare tumor. Uh, they've been analyzed with every modern uh, genomic method with no success. But when we imaged them with BioNano, when we imaged their genome, uh, we saw this region here that was interesting. And we're showing you just a number of molecules. And you can already see with the naked eye that there's some patterns in there. So we built a consensus genome map that I've um, consists of the average spacing of these labels. And when we compare that to HG19, you see perfect alignment on the left, but something's going on there on the right. We also built another map for the other allele, uh, which is wild type and aligns perfectly with the reference. Now, when you compare this to the controls shown on top uh, that are not involved in this cancer, uh, you see that the two alleles there align perfectly with the reference. Now, in this patient here, and keep in mind, this is the germline, not the tumor, you see that there's a 38 KB fragment that's present in six tandem copies. Now, how do we know this so sure? We know this because we have single molecules that span the entire 230 KB of that repeat. And that is really the strength of our technology. Um, we observe uh, structural variants directly on single molecules compared to NGS, where they are inferred algorith al algorithmically um, after uh, you know, chopping up the genome in little pieces. And what's important finding here is that that gene unlabeled there on the left uh, is known to be mutated in this tumor pathway. So um, this is really an interesting finding uh, for this family that was impossible to detect uh, with other methods. Now for cancer specifically, um, where samples can be very heterogeneous and you can have subclonal populations of cells, we developed another pipeline that we call the rare pipeline. And it allows you to detect very low allele fraction structural variants with very high sensitivity and very high PPV, so low false positives. And we can go down to as low as 1% variant allele fraction. So at 300x effective coverage, so that means just a single flow cell uh, run for a day on our instrument, we can detect translocations, inversions, deletions, insertions, and duplications down to 5% allele fraction. Keep in mind that it's completely unbiased. There's no amplification. There's no panel. We show you every structural variant down to 5% allele fraction. And if you want to run your instrument longer for two to four days, then we can go down to as little as 1% allele fraction. So that means that if just 2% of the cells in your tumor have a heterozygous translocation anywhere, we will still pick that up. No other technology can do this or comes even close to that. So I want to show you a couple examples from cancer. Keep in mind that all of these findings really apply to genetic disease as well. Uh, cancer is typically a little harder, so I'll, I'll show you those examples first. So the first paper I want to talk about is from Dr. Jim Broach, who is Director of Personalized Medicine at the Penn State Institute uh, in Hershey. And uh, he published work on a dozen leukemia samples that were analyzed with NGS and BioNano. And in this paper, he shows a number of variants uh, found in different leukemia samples. Like here's a case of a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma where the T lymphocytes were cultured as a germline control. But when you look at the lymphoma cells, you actually see that there's a three megabase inversion. This inversion was missed by NGS was not seen on a karyotype because it's just too small for that. But what's important here is that it cuts right through that gene P10 that's labeled in red at the bottom. P10 is a known tumor suppressor gene. And um, when this gene is disrupted, it has a severe effect on the um, development of the tumor and also on the treatment, really, because there are dozens of compounds and trials, uh, dozens of um, 
trials going on for compounds that rescue P10 mutations. Uh, the SNP in the other allele was picked up with sequencing. Uh, so here you have this combination where the bio-nano optical mapping or genome imaging was really essential to find this variant that could immediately have changed the treatment uh, for this patient. Now, in the paper, they show a number of leukemia genes uh, on the left there that were affected by multiple variants and multiple samples. That makes a lot of sense. But they also found a lot of other cancer-associated genes that were not previously linked to leukemia. And on top of that, dozens and dozens of genes that were not previously linked to cancer at all that were affected in multiple samples. So there's an enormous potential of discovery here just out of the single simple study on 12 leukemia genomes. And that is really because there simply was no method to look at genome-wide structural variation with this type of sensitivity before. So these studies just couldn't be done. There's still an enormous amount of um, new genes and new biomarkers to be discovered. And actually, if you pay attention um, to this study, uh, they followed up by looking at some of these genes, looking at the TCAG, TCGA uh, data and finding that they really do affect um, survival in uh, some of these patients. Another study that just came out in bioarchives is of great interest to us. Uh, this is from a team at the Radboud University in Nijmegen in the Netherlands, and they've always been at the forefront of bringing new technology into the clinic. And that's what they're doing here by comparing our technology, our genome imaging technology, with standard cytogenetics. And standard cytogenetics is karyotyping, as we've shown before. There's fish which works well, but you only use specific probes to specific genes, so it has a very limited uh, field of view in a sense. And then chromosomal microarray, uh, that's only able, capable of detecting uh, duplications and deletions, uh, but cannot find um, the exact structure and cannot find balanced events. So in this study, they compared BioNano against all of these methods combined in 48 samples and amazingly found 100% concordance meaning that in all 48 samples, Bionano picked up all the clinically uh, reported structural variants from karyotype and fish and array combined. That is just incredible. And many uh, sequencing-based methods have tried to do this and failed to replace cytogenetics. Uh, we are the first technology that can actually do that. And um, besides these uh, more standard variants like a BCR able translocation that they found, um, they had a sample with complex chromothripsis that was resolved unambiguously uh, by BioNano. And on top of that, they also discovered 19 novel gene fusions never before reported. And some of them have a um, translocation partner that is known to be important, like BCR at the bottom there, but with a new translocation partner that had not been reported before. So again, an enormous amount of uh, discovery potential in this type of data. And the power of our technology really is that we could take a workflow like you see on the left there, the cytolab workflow, where you have, depending on the input source and the test that you're doing, an enormous amount of different procedures with different equipment, with culturing of cells, with different microscope and array scanners and, and uh, hybridization uh, ovens and all of that. And all of that could be replaced with the workflow on the right it's just a simple, single instrument, single uh, DNA extraction workflow, and then a single piece of software that can give you array data, fish data, karyotype data, all of that combined. We have many more exciting cancer discovery stories. Uh, here is a sample, a pair of hepatocellular carcinomas that were analyzed. Two uh, liver tumors that looked fairly identical um, under a microscope. But if you look on the left, you see a fairly simple um, karyotype or a simple genome with just a few rearrangements. But on the right, you see a massive number of rearrangements, massive changes in copy number and translocations. And the difference between the two is really the lack or presence of replication stress. And we also found the cause of that. In the figure above that there, you see that we detected the HBV, so the hepatitis B, virus insertion site right upstream of a cyclin E1 gene. And that cyclin gene uh, regulates the cell cycle. The viral promoter turns on that cyclin gene, makes that cell replicate much faster than the DNA replication can keep up with, 
and that causes this genome to really fall apart. So not only do we see the signature of that replication stress, but we also see the cause of that, that hepatitis insertion. I want to switch to genetic disease and finish up with a few more examples here. Um, here is a patient with Duchenne muscular dystrophy, severe degenerative um, muscular dystrophy that affects boys uh, because it's X-linked and it's a very, very large gene, uh, the largest gene in the human genome really with 79 exons. And this patient had all the symptoms of Duchenne's but was analyzed with microarray, with whole genome sequence with MLPA to look for the presence or absence of all of the exons. All of the exons were PCR amplified and Sanger sequenced, and yet no variants were found in this gene. But when it was analyzed with Bionano, we immediately picked up this five megabase inversion, which you see here, which cuts, which cuts the dystrophin gene labeled DMD on the right, uh, right in half. So this disrupted the gene entirely. Uh, evidence of this was found uh, in the RNA after muscle biopsy picked up immediately by BioNano. They're showing it twice here with two labeling enzymes. Uh, Mark Ebert, who's also speaking, a speaker at the symposium, uh, used our technology to identify a repeat expansion at the C9 RF72 gene, uh, which is a cause of ALS or one of the causes of ALS. And what you're looking at here is a number of alleles, a number of maps that were built by our system with various sizes of the insertion. So you see that the spacing between these labels from top to bottom increases all the way to 32 KB insertion. And we see several molecules of, uh, supporting each of these expansions. And this comes from a single brain biopsy from a patient who died of ALS. So not only are we able to span and measure that uh, repeat expansion that consists entirely out of G's and C's, uh, you cannot PCR amplify this. No modern technology can um, span that, the BioNano can. We also see this in a mosaic pattern, so we can tell you exactly what allele fraction there is uh, for each of these expansions in the brain. Now, there's another muscular dystrophy um, where BioNano plays an important part, and that is FSHD. Uh, that stands for fasciocapular humeral muscular dystrophy. Um, it's a muscular dystrophy that affects mostly the shoulders and the arms uh, and the face. And uh, the only way to diagnose this method is with southern blood using radioactive labeling. Uh, a lot of universities and centers have to get rid of this radioactive labeling or want to. And the reason why this only works with southern blood is because there's a very large repeat septelomeric of chromosome 4. And when that contracts below 10 copies, then it causes the disease by changing the chromatin structure. Now, to genotype this, you have to exactly measure this large repeat, and you have to genotype uh, the presence of the pathogenic or non-pathogenic allele. All of this is very complex, but BioNano does this very beautifully. As you see there, the magenta part um, represents the repeat, and you see a contracted repeat on top in a patient sample, and then a wild-type uh, repeat in a control sample below that. And our Enfocus software generates a summary report uh, with a genotype that then can be used by labs to develop a clinical test. And that's exactly what Perkin Elmer Genomics and the University of Iowa have already done. Uh, University of Iowa is the largest center in North America for FSHD testing, and they are using our technology for that. Now, if you want to get BioNano data, uh, we made it easier than ever for you to access that. Starting from the right, you can simply purchase a system. It starts at $150,000, and then the cost per genome is just $450. We also have reagent rental models where you commit to 120 genomes in six months, and we give you an instrument for free to use. Or you can use our full service offering where you simply send our samples, send your samples to BioNano, and we give you the data back, and that starts at $650. I would highly recommend you have a look at our website. We have a library of videos uh, from presentations from other scientists who have used our technology and, and made some spectacular findings with that. And with that, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, you're welcome to ask any questions here, and we will get back to you as quickly as possible with that. So thank you.